tonight. Okay. So what we're doing on this particular meeting, this is a called meeting of the board. Okay. We have the listed three, adjusted, three um, items listed for agenda. And those are the only things we're going to discuss is those, those three items that are listed for the, for the agenda. Because it is a called um, call meeting, there is no citizens to be heard portion for that. So we don't have general public comment. If there's anybody that wants to speak to the board during those agenda items, that's the part that we're talking about that can occur. The other important matter with that is when we're speaking to the agenda item, we can only talk about that agenda item as it is stated. So it's not, uh, there cannot be other things discussed. We know the primary purpose of having this meeting is because of an incident occurred with a board member, but we're not talking about that incident as a part of this, okay? And part of the reason why, again, is because legal policy drives a lot of what a board does per se, and based on the legal policy, and that's why we're having this meeting, is to meet with our attorney to talk about that more in terms of board role, et cetera. But we cannot, during this board meeting, have any discussions or from the board or from anybody else about the specific incident or about an individual per se is involved in that part of it. And that's part of the call board meeting. Now, when we have our meeting September 26 with the citizens to be heard portion, then that, that opens it up for a broader discussion, et cetera. Okay, so that's, that's how we're running and conducting the meeting tonight and the purpose of the meeting tonight. We can't get interactive right now. Yeah, okay? So let me. Oh, there's, no, there's no objection. This is. Yeah. Uh, two things. Two. Yeah, that's what. So that's why we're. Let me let me clarify again. The reason why this board is meeting, and this board met as fast as it could based on the timelines and other things as a whole group, is to find out the scope of what we can and cannot do in this regard. It is driven by legal policy. Unfortunately, a lot of people are thinking that the board can make certain decisions and take certain actions, et cetera. That is why we're meeting with our legal. That's the whole purpose of this meeting tonight is to meet with our legal counsel tonight to find out that scope. Okay, so I know someone again, Dalit. We just can't do that until we find out. Let us get in that, our session with our attorney so we can understand exactly our scope, the legal policy, and other things. Okay, okay. So we'll go ahead. Yeah. We'll get started uh, with our superintendent on our very first item. Yes, sir, Mr. President, members of the board. Um, uh, also want to extend appreciation not only to our first responders, but also our veterans and our servicemen and women uh, as we reflect on this um, very, very important uh, day being September 11th. Um, the first item for your consideration is uh, a letter of engagement uh, with Thompson Horton. Uh, I had the uh, uh, opportunity to reach out to David Thompson as we're starting the school year and we're trying to continue to keep our focus on students and particularly student success. With everything going on legislatively, with the A through F accountability uh, potentially on pause, uh, of course school finance uh, potentially coming uh, to to a, a point of uh, uh, great discernment with a special session to be called in October. We feel like this would be an appropriate time uh, to look at a letter of engagement uh, for attorney services uh, with Thompson Horton, particularly David Thompson. So I had reached out to David. He's been practicing law for over 40 years. He's uh, been with TEA as general counsel, had the opportunity to work with David, I guess, going on 15 years. And um, he is absolutely top notch and has agreed to help us with uh, some matters that are of importance to the district. So with that being said, you have a copy of the letter of engagement uh, for, uh, like I say, the, the uh, procurement of legal services using Thompson Horton Associates. Thank you. All right. Any uh, comments or questions from the board? Do we have any uh, citizens that were signed up for that agenda item? The first one? This is not number 17. Yeah, see, yeah. Okay. All right. If not, uh, is there a motion to come before the. Uh, uh, no. Oh, which item we're on is that? No. 16. 16. Okay, with 17B. Yeah, that means. 17B, I mean, we don't have it in front of us, so. Yeah, this is, this is item 16A. Okay, hold, hold, we're starting to get, oh, no, let's keep the hands down, y'all. We, we'll, we'll catch everybody up where we are, okay? And let's wait, yeah. Oh, for this particular one? Okay. Your, uh, your, on. your name, sir? Eric Mata. Yeah, give him a chance to catch up. Yes, sure. Mr. Eric Mata. Um, oh, let me, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mata. Let me go through our rules for addressing the board first, if you don't mind. 
All right. So we please uh, we'll address your comments to the board, as you know, confine your remarks to, NI, to, the, uh, to the particular NI, uh, agenda item, and that includes our NIC policy or practice. Uh, limit your remarks to three minutes, and we'll show, I think we have up the clock, and what actually happened is at um, the two-minute point, uh, Trustee will hold up a yellow card, and then when we're at the three-minute point, uh, he'll hold up the red card. And uh, again, it's just a reminder for all of our agenda tonight, it's got to be on that specific agenda item, okay? Okay. So we'll go ahead. Yeah. As a product of this district and a longtime resident of this community, um, I will say that it troubles me that we're seeing a municipal, well, not a municipal body, but we see it a lot when it comes to municipal bodies where they take advice from council. Okay. And what I would say is, remember, that's advice. That's not a hard set rule for you guys as the board. Obviously you seek their advice, but that doesn't mean that that is legal or, or written in stone. And I personally find it troubling that we're being limited so much in our speech here. You as a board know why we're here. We expect transparency, we expect accountability, and the idea that we're being shackled in a sense with our speech and our ability to express ourselves is troubling. So if that's the kind of advice you're getting from your legal services, I would stop and say, first and foremost, you should serve this community, serve the parents of this district, and consider our feelings no matter which way they go on this issue. The idea that people have taken time out of their day after working long, hard hours to come over here and express themselves and to not be respected and allowed to speak I mean, there are rules, right? The Texas Open Meetings Act is very explicit. There should be a citizens to be heard. And I understand you guys are being advised in a different direction, but you guys should not deny the people you're here to represent, your constituents. And I appreciate the fact that we have this opportunity, but you've basically taken it away from us. And I'd really appreciate if you'd consider, reconsider the idea of not having, having a citizens to be heard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. do, we, uh, do we have anybody else uh, sign up to speak to the agenda item 16 regarding the attorney council? Okay. No, you're fine. No, no. no any, since we've already taken the list and the time, this, this one is strictly on 16, the attorney part. So you're fine. When we get to 17, 18 next, and we'll let others speak to those items, okay? So you're, Let's you're go. The person told me I couldn't speak on 16. You're right. I'm not saying. Who's, um, uh, let, me, let me clarify. Which? Uh, the young lady up okay. at the front that was going to sign in. You said only on 17 and 18. Okay. Now, if she just clarified, she clarified this, um, speak on any item, okay? All right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and move forward then so we can get, uh, let me get this one done. Just a point of, check on 16 one more time. Point of clarification, uh, Terry Sablocki, uh, I have engagement letter, but I also have item number 17. Uh, was, it, was it item number 17? On that. Under the third item. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Thank All right, again, this is just us hiring the attorney portion, okay? Not the other discussion points that we'll get to. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Oh, go ahead. Uh, Trustee Freeman? Yeah, Mr. Blunt, just for the, the record, too, um, Dr. Kraft talked about um, his working with um, Dave T David Thompson of. Thompson and Horton, I just wanted to add to that this board has a, um, we hired Dave Thompson for the last um, three superintendent searches that we've done. So this board does have a, a relationship with, with Dave Thompson as well, not just our superintendent. Thank you, okay. Any other comments or questions? All right, is a motion to come before the board? I would, I'm oh, sorry, I, I would move approval of the, uh, of the engagement letter. Okay, motion and a second, any further discussion? 
All right, if not, it's moved and second. Um, as presented, all those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed, state nay. Okay, good, motion carries. That's okay. No, that's all right. <laughs> that's fine. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. All right. So our next one is scheduled in for our closed session, uh, the agenda items. Um, let me talk to the board. I think this is an appropriate time first for us to, to hear from those citizens that have signed up for. We'll take um, number 17 first uh, for those that signed up for that. And then we'll take number 18 before the board actually goes into executive session, unless there's a reason we need to uh, during the, uh, as we hear that particular dialogue. Um, normally, our board, what we would also do, so everybody's aware, is uh, how, how many total speakers do we have? I believe we have nine. Okay. My, my suggestion is that we go ahead and I'll allow nine for those. I don't know. Typically, what we'll do is we'll consolidate it. Uh, but in this particular case, um, if the board's okay, I, I think we should go ahead and hear from everybody. Okay. Okay. Ten. Everybody's ten, good. Sir. Oh, 10? Okay, good. So let me, let me once again, uh, let me reinforce again, it is uh, about that particular agenda item. I, I know some of the other comments and other things, but let's just keep it focused on that, on that, on that particular agenda item. Uh, we'll start with uh, 17 first. Yes, sir. And, uh, uh, we have Robert Gonzalez signed up first. Hi, uh, my name is Robert Gonzalez. I live in um, a 310 Hope Drive, so I am in the district. And uh, my question, I don't know, uh, as regarding this item, I understand that um, there will be a, a discussion among the board in executive session, and that is closed to the general public. Am I understanding correctly? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we'll go into it's only the board members in this case because it is uh, going to be an exception that we can have our attorney in there also. Okay. So we'll go into closed session and then we'll come back out into open okay. afterwards. Okay. And um, so the, the question I have uh, for the board, uh, of course, it involves the incident, the recent incident. Uh, I don't know um, what kind of comment uh, or if there can be any comment from the board regarding the incident. Um, I don't know what kind of guidance you've received from um, your council, but I, I just want to state that uh, we're very much, I'm very much concerned, and I know many others who are concerned that uh, the incident involved uh, something that uh, is a poor, very poor display, uh, very poor example for the students in our district, especially for those in high school who are driving, uh, many of whom uh, maybe. Uh, tempted to, to drink, although they're not of age, uh, and they may also be, be driving while drunk. And I think it's a loss of confidence in the board in general if there's a uh, uh, continued, if that uh, the person involved is not asked to resign. That's, that's what I have to say. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, fine. Okay. Okay. Good. And um, just for f further, you know, just to clarify, um, and I may have, I'll be a little bit r repetitive. In addition to the legal counsel, this is the first time this board has also had opportunity to meet as a whole board, et cetera, and other individuals and other things that may have gotten calls, et cetera. But um, the other part to understand is this is we act as a whole board, as, as a group, and this is sort of our first engagement in addition to having the opportunity to talk to the uh, attorney, too. Okay. Next uh, is Vera Billingsley. Thank you, and I'm glad that y'all are uh, listening to your constituents because um, I, too, am concerned about the ethics involved in this situation. And if the board is not going to stand up on ethics, ethics um, having to do with our morals, our character, how we conduct ourselves in everyday life in, as examples to the community, that is so important of each one of our board members. And I know there's a, a place for forgiveness, but there's also a place for having to pay for the, the breaches of ethics that we commit. So I would just say that and pray that you all remember to give God and his Ten Commandments consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Ernest Martinez. Good evening, uh, Board of Trustees, 
My name is Ernest Martinez. I'm chairman of the Cesar Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation. We're a nonprofit organization. And we're blessed to have Dr. Carla Dudan that serves as our scholarship chairwoman for the organization. And I'm a product of Northside Independent School District, graduate of John Marshall High School. I grew up a few blocks away from this building. And I, and I think it's very important that we take very careful steps. I just looked up, you know, when we think about incriminating others, making someone appear guilty when they're not. So it's very important that we take very careful steps because we've seen it in our community where people make missteps. And you're right, forgiveness is important. But we've seen elected officials recently come into situations like this and not a peep. Roll around in the ground, I'm not gonna name names, we know that who that person is. We've had a county commissioner in a drive-thru, yeah. half naked. Yeah, that's up. So these are the things that we gotta think about okay. and be very sensitive to people's right. feelings. And let, and let me let me let me ask this. I, I'm, I'm so sorry, my only guys. question is, we're okay. We've got the elephant in the room. We're saying legal counsel. We have we've not mentioned the name of the individual. So full for full transparency, I think we need to elevate those issues to the surface and have a very honest conversation in this community, and give very serious consideration to the merits of this individual that we're talking about. So those are my comments, and it's very early, and I know there's gonna be a process, but this due process involves the community. And we as taxpayers and residents of the school district have a say. That's all I have for this evening. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, I did, yeah once again, uh, we're not, uh, uh, once again, oh, hold up, hold up, 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 yeah, let me, once again, main, main thing again is, please do not, List any individuals, not only here, but others too. This is focused on the board member role, so we gotta keep it focused on that, okay? Uh, Y'all yeah, really, it's real important that we do that. Um, I'll make a quick comment on it if the board doesn't mind. And, and I know y'all hopefully continue to believe in the North ISD board and that we're gonna do things, but you gotta let us follow our right process, et cetera, okay? So once it, no, uh, no comment over there, please, please, please. No, no comment? No, it's, it's not. It's not, not in this particular case. There's different rules. Again, uh, again, do not, do not, I'm not going to go back and forth with you, okay? If you any further, I'm going to have to ask you to leave, and I don't want to do that, okay? This is a board meeting run by the board. There's different rules and other things that apply, okay? So let's go ahead and call the next one. Will Bradshaw. Hello, board. Uh, my name is Will Bradshaw. I'm on the Leon Valley City Council. Um, currently, and um, I signed up to speak on item 17, specifically uh, where it says, discuss with legal counsel and receive legal advice regarding duties of a school board member as a public officer. And I just would like to repeat that and think about it. The duties of a school board member as a public officer. Um, we all know why we're here. We've all seen what's happened on the news. To, to dance around it, to not notice it in the meeting. If you look at the first paragraph of the Texas Open Meetings Act, it says the provision of the act are mandatory and are to be liberally construed in favor of open government. By not putting who this agenda item is about, you've already tried to hide what this uh, agenda item is about tonight, which obviously didn't work. A lot of people are aware. I think a lot more people would be aware if you did put an out a proper agenda. And as was mentioned before, it was put on the agenda that there was going to be citizens to be hurt and then was taken it away. Right, right. So just be careful, err on the side, as I said, of uh, open government. Mm -hmm. And I hope you do the right thing when you're in an executive session discussing what the proper actions is of somebody who committed a DUI or allegedly committed a DUI. Uh, hypothetically, if somebody were to be drinking and driving and they're supposed to be a representative of our community, of our school children, and you're going to let them continue on as a, a member of the board. It's it's disgraceful, and you need to think about that. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have Josh Stevens. And, and, and I'm sorry, I talked to the, the clarify. I'm glad you brought that up. What actually happened with the uh, agenda, and as you pointed out, that was taken out of there. 
Ms. Cliffs, in a further review, you know, we know this is a called meeting, and, and we thought, and I talked to the superintendent, that that's going to maybe be a little bit confusing, although we've never had that before, per se. But you're right, it was taken out that th there was not a citizen to be heard for this called meeting. So you're absolutely correct. Thank, thank you. Go ahead. Um, good evening, uh, President Blunt and uh, oh. members of. Oh, hold on, everybody. Let's be uh, let's be respectful. Okay, let's let's listen, to everybody. Yeah, let's listen, to everybody. I'm sorry. Um, good evening, President Blunt and members of the board. I've had the the privilege of meeting uh, many of you. Um, I uh, went to school and graduated with uh, Mr. Er, Mr. Blunt's son. Um, so I've been in Northside, born and raised. Been here for a while. Live. Football is throw away from here. I um, mean, also represent the Leon Valley citizens on the Leon Valley City Council. But I come here in my personal capacity, not as an official, but as a in my personal capacity, concerned about the district that I live in, which is District Three, and the representation that I have as a citizen and constituent of District Three. Um, I, I apologize. I had to kind of tailor my comments to um, conform to the uh, rules that y'all have for the meeting. But I, I guess I, I want to talk about what the responsibility, the roles and responsibilities of a board member are, um, as I understand them to be. And, and there are many written rules. For example, I, I went on the Northside's uh, website, and y'all have um, policies, Section B, local governments. Um, it's actually on the uh, T TASB um, side, and uh, Section uh, BBC talks about um, a board member may be removed for office for intoxication on or off duty caused by drinking an alcoholic beverage, but not if it was caused by drinking an al alcoholic beverage on the direction and prescription of a licensed physician. Um, I, as a, uh, a registered nurse, I, f I, I have doubts that a, a physician um, ordered a, a representative to uh, yeah. drink alcohol and drive, um, but you know that, that's to be said. I think though one of the main responsibilities of a board member and uh, is to be a role model for the, for the constituents that you have, more importantly for the students that go to school, and that, and that respect and admire each and every one of you as role models. And I know uh, Mr. Blunt has been on the school board for a long time, and he's a great example of a role model. I also want to recall, you know, when I was going to high school, one of the memories, one of the memory, many memories that I have is um, driving by, um, w there was a reenactment of a crash scene, and um, I know it affected a lot of students that went to Taft, I went to Com Arts, but um, that, that, that impacted them s significantly emotionally and really educated them on what it can happen if you impair yourself and drink and drive. So that being said, I, I've kind of had to you know, change my remarks, but I think it's important for each and every member of the board to hold themselves accountable. I understand the board members may be limited on what you can and can't do legally, but I, I, I would just encourage and implore um, the member of this body um, to hold herself accountable for her actions. Next we have Jack Miller. You want to just give my name or? Yeah, just say you, your name if you want to say who you are too. Oh, my name is Jack Miller. Yeah. I uh, came over here because I heard there was rumor that uh, citizens were to be told that they were interrupted while they're speaking on agenda items if they mention Dr. Carla Duran's name. I saw that not to be the case just a minute ago. Her name was mentioned. Nobody said anything. Um, I run a mm -hmm. large civil rights activism group and we respond to fires uh, in regards to the First Amendment and other amendments but First Amendment and, and when I heard that that's why you know we came to kind of watch what was going on um, I want to remind you that Texas passed a law on agenda items when people are speaking on agenda items unlike citizens to be heard where you cannot interrupt them unless they're <sighs> I guess violating a rule of decorum. So if they're being critical, you can't interrupt them for that. So, and of course you have to talk on an agenda item, we all know that, you gotta stay on the topic. But other than that, uh, I wouldn't. I, I don't wanna see anybody interrupting a citizen while they're talking on an agenda item. Um, <clears throat> I don't see what the big deal is. Uh, it, 
why why you can't say we're we're gonna go talk about Dr. Duran's situation in executive session. It would have looked much better for you guys just to do that. Everybody knows. I mean, everybody knows. And to that point about everybody knowing, even though none of you here up here would talk to me, you guys talk to other people who talk to me. I can tell you, and you can ask cities that I've dealt with, nothing you do behind executive session is secret. Humans just can't keep their mouth shut. So you just can't. You know, keep things secret. Just just put it out there. Let the citizens consume it. And then, you know, deal with, deal with what comes after that. I, I, It's alleged. I agree. There was a guy I saw on the news who allegedly kicked in the front door of her home and got shot and he's dead. And he was allegedly breaking into the house. Same thing. And I don't see what the big deal is. I had a few beers coming over here. Got a six pack out in the truck. I don't see what the problem is. Uh, so I'm all, I'm all behind her and, uh, I would just, just remember about agenda items and not interrupting folks. And I do appreciate your candor with, with what's going on right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Roman Pena. Roman Pena. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, say a few words. Uh, I am Roman Pena. I'm with the American GI Forum here in San Antonio. And uh, we've been around for 75 years. And our uh, purpose is to protect democracy and to protect freedom of speech and veterans that have problems in the community. So it uh, sort of alarms me a little bit that you would uh, not uh, would sort of try to knock down the affirmative the, uh, democracy process. You know, freedom of speech is one of the items of democracy, and of course, I don't have to tell you uh, how it works because I know you do. But anyway, today I am here to give our support to Dr. Carla Duran. You know, we were very proud of her when she got elected, a rising star. And uh, this kind of stuff happens. And uh, you know, in the uh, last few uh, months, a lot of things have happened in the, uh, in the country concerning the th situations like this. And, uh, and it seems that when it happens to somebody else, the press doesn't cover it. We learned about it because the paper carried it pretty heavily, two stories, you know? And that's, that's telling us something that uh, Dr. Carla was uh, probably set up to uh, sort of uh, damage her reputation. But uh, doctor, be uh, strong and stay here. And I know that you have the support of your colleagues and of course the chairman, uh, because you, I think you're doing a good job and uh, we want you to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have Richard Gonzalez. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Richard Gonzalez, uh, been a um, committee member for the last, um, man, I already forget, <laughs> years or so, since 1979. I've been a yeah. Northside School Board uh, or, or, uh, taxpayer. Um, but uh, I'm here, the reason I'm here today is 9 11, and this is the day that we remember what happened 22 years ago uh, and how the community and everybody got together and came and made it happen to, to defend our freedom and our de way of democracy. Mm -hmm. I'm here in support of uh, Dr. Carla Duran. I think that um, based on this meeting that you all call in, I think, I think it's jumping the gun, okay? I think uh, you gotta let the process play out. That's the only way. You know, I don't know if she's guilty or not guilty. I haven't ha had a chance to talk to her individually about her situation. But uh, when the paper comes out heavy-handed like this, me being a member of the American GI Forum, our, our, our Dr. Hector Garcia, which 
I give credit to the Northside School District uh, being up there naming all the schools for Hispanic uh, um, leaders in our community. Dr. Hector B. Garcia was one of them. Uh, you know, and that's to fight for issues that affect the Hispanic community. So, you know, I, I'm not going to go into uh, detail as to what you guys are going to do or not do or what power you don't have. But it, as you can see, there's a lot of people here in the community that are behind her. You know, and you all need to be aware of that. Some, some gentlemen made the comment that, you know, you, you have to hear us. You have to hear us. You can't go by legal counsel all the time. You know, it's a recommendation, but you have to use a better judgment because you guys, all of you are elected officials. She's an elected official. She was elected four months ago, and we all make mistakes, and anybody here that doesn't make mistakes, come forward and speak against her, you know. But anyway, I'm just saying here, as a, as a member of American GI Forum, a taxpayer on Northside, give her the benefit of the doubt until this plays out. That's all you can do. Was that, Mr. Chairman, thank you for hearing me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence Guzman Romo. Mr. Romo? Lawrence Guzman Romo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Lawrence Guzman Romo. I'm a proud product of San Antonio Public Schools. I've lived in the Northside School District since 1984. I currently live in uh, Bobby Blout's uh, district. I'm a proud uh, member of the Northside Education Foundation because I believe uh, in enhancing the wellness of our public education. And I want to thank all of you all because you all truly represent service before self. And also I want to thank all the citizens that are here that are concerned because it shows that you care about uh, students, whether you agree or disagree, we're here to care about our educational process. So anyway, um, what I'd like to do is, is just talk a little bit about perseverance and commitment. Uh, I would encourage the board, I had the privilege a Saturday of watching uh, a million miles away about uh, astronaut uh, Jose Hernandez and it's really a good movie it talks about perseverance and commitment it took him 12 times to uh, get to become an astronaut uh, he got turned down 11 times on the 12th time a great movie and, and it, it's good to show the kids that one because he was a migrant worker growing up and I would encourage you to do that but I say that perseverance and commitment because uh, the, the individual question Dr. Duran had perseverance commitment if you look at her background and what she did and like Richard Gonzalez my my compatriot in uh, American GI Forum said it's important that we give people a chance people make mistakes we're all human I've made mistakes in my life I know Bob, Bobby's I've made some mistakes in our lives we all have and it's important that we we take that into consideration it's got to be a teachable moment and we understand what teachable moments are yes somebody alleged made a mistake but we need to give them for the doubt to see what, how that process plays. We also can make that a teachable moment uh, to the students uh, to say, hey, let's overcome that, let's pre pre persevere, and let's have commitment. And commitment to excellence, that's what Northside School wants. And I guarantee you that Dr. Duran believes in commitment to excellence. So thank you very much, and I wish you all well. Godspeed. Finally, we have Terry Zablocki. Good evening. Approximately 25 years ago, I had the um, wonderful opportunity and the privilege of talking to Sandra Day O'Connor at the graduation, or not the, gra the dedication of Sandra Day O'Connor High School. And for me, I had that um, capacity because I happened to serve at the time as a board member. And so I come in front with, I'm gonna start with the first quote, that when I heard what happened, uh, all the various sources, et cetera, people called, et cetera. I went to um, quotes from Dr. Uh, from uh, Sandra Day O'Connor. And one of the things she says on her iCivics website is, I consider engaging the next generations of citizens to be most important, my most important work yet, and my legacy, okay? And so I looked at that and I started thinking, number one, I tried to find out uh, I know to look, because I have served, I know to look at board policy, and I looked at board policy. And for everyone who's distressed, I can share, I can say things, because I sat there 
you can't say anything. As a board member, they, it's, they're like pinata, hello. They take hits, they get lowered down by regulations, and I don't care what happens. And if they violate that, then our district is held and financially, and there are all kinds of implications. So that's number one. They can't say things, I can't. But as a resident of single member district three, I saw that there was an opportunity, uh, something described to petition the court that a, an individual could do so. And so when you consult with, um, and, and then I was looking in the paper to see what the response from the district would be. So if somebody was really upset, they could go ahead and do that process. Unfortunately, they can't say anything. Number two, um, <clears throat> I had the good fortune in terms of uh, Justice O'Connor. We talked about education. Uh, I taught at the school that she attended in El Paso. So I had a number of items there to speak to her about. There are some other issues in terms of it, but I'm gonna come to the final item that I think every single one of us here tonight is in agreement with. We're in favor of real world authentic assessment for education, it's what we do. And so I would urge that having been an educator, I've taken students, high school students, to field trips to the courthouse right and we watched and we have courts in school where court is held in session at school Northside offers school choice the law and medical magnet uh, my understanding is this whatever hearing so that we can all hear the information i would say put it in front of the students at the law and medical magnet and every one of us can make the judgment and let the students go thank you okay Did we miss one? Oh yeah, you could. Sorry, that's. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, you've spoken. He signed up for both multiple. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. yeah. I apologize. Yeah, I didn't see yeah, the you're form. Fine. You're fine. Just say your name again for the record. Eric Mata. Yeah, Eric Mata. Yeah, huh? 16 and 17. It's still 17, 18. Yeah, yeah. He signed for both. That's fine. You're so, um, I think it's interesting sitting here listening to my fellow residents, citizens, um, speak on this topic. Um, I think it's a time where we should all reflect and look inward into our soul, where we see so much division. And I'm really troubled by this. I hate to, and please don't be offended. I'm not meaning it to be offend, uh, offensive in any way, but there's a sense of tribalism here, you know? And I hate to say that. I mean, when are we gonna get to the point where we stop allowing our last name or the color of our skin determine who we support, who we back, because at the same time, probably a lot of people that, that, that come out strongly in one way or, or, or the other in regards to Dr. Run, probably at the same time, if they had to review their actions and their thoughts, they probably don't support other people who maybe don't look like them or have a last name like them as well. So I, I would just caution everyone here to stop, and you as a board, to not allow that to influence the direction you go in this. Uh, I do agree there's a process here. Um, there are teachers, there's staff, there's admin that are held accountable every day in school districts all across this country. And think about the fact that the example you set, if you say that a board member or a uh, high level staff member deserves some special treatment versus a, a teacher or an aide of some sort. So, Again, I'm not up here to advocate and say one way or the other what you guys should do here. But at the same time, I sense this climate of, oh, you know, don't do this because of this, the, a relationship I have with this person or I back this person. We should all demand accountability and transparency. And, uh, and at the same time, uh, I had a couple of of other things I wanted to say. The other thing I would say is I, I've noticed, uh, you know, in the past, and as y'all go into executive session, I'd really encourage you as elected officials to act independently of the superintendent, of other high level staff here. You are elected by the people and you should serve independent. You have a right to question everything. The, the, 
the employees of this district, I don't care at what level they serve this district, they're here and they should answer to you as the elected officials. Remember, as you are here to answer to your constituents who voted you in. So please, please keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. So that's all our citizens have you heard. Let me tell you what's going to happen next. Um, so we're going to go into our uh, closed session and, uh, and, and again, have the discussion that was identified, discuss uh, with council and receive legal advice regarding um, duties of a school board member as a public officer. And again, we're going to have our discussions as board members. Uh, and, um, and what we'll do after having that discussion, you know, we'll come back out in open session, okay? Um, may or may not take action, but it depends on what comes from the closed session. So the board, and appreciate uh, one final, because some of y'all may be leaving, some of y'all stay. Uh, yeah, I yeah, appreciate the uh, interaction, to be honest. Uh, hopefully, again, y'all trust us, et cetera, in this particular regard. I, I know a lot of you, et cetera, and I hope you all feel that we're going to have the best interest of all at heart, no matter what, but, but, but appreciate uh, how you all are responding, et cetera, okay? So the board of uh, trustees, beginning at, what time is it? Uh, 6.50, will convene and close meeting in, in accordance with sex, uh, section code. In this particular case, we're going to use 551.071 and 551072. And discussion to take place, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, thank you, um, 074. And the discussion is gonna take place on the, uh, the two agenda items that were uh, listed, discuss legal counsel and receive legal advice regarding duties of a school board member as a public officer. And uh, 551074, discuss the duties of a school board member as a, uh, as a public officer, okay? Good, all right. So the Board of Trustees on September 11, 2023, beginning at 8.10 p.m., will convene back in open meeting. Um, if there's any action to take, was there any action that comes out of the following items from any board member? Okay. Um, I, I do want to make one general statement on behalf of our board. Um, in, consul in consultation, to summarize um, our closed session, so in consultation with our, uh, with our attorney, and in accordance with BBC Legal and the Texas Government Code, it was clear the board does not, once again, the board does not have authority to remove or even, it's not even part of the process uh, for a trustee. Uh, we do want to definitely move forward and continue our focus on the education of all of our children, taking care of all our staff, our teachers, and everybody else we have as a whole team. And that we will do as a whole team together. So. The board will now end its meeting at 11, 8, 11 p.m. on September 11, 2023. Thank you all.